Right, it's that time of year, isn't it? It's that time of year when the Premier League is so close, it's in touching distance, we're almost there, and that means it's time for me to try and predict what's going to happen. I'm going to get it so wrong, like everyone does, but it's fun, isn't it? That's the point, isn't it? It's fun to try and look ahead, get excited for the season, see where we're all at, and predict the Premier League. That's what I'm doing in this video. I'm going to try to, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I already did the Chelsea Premier League predictions. If you are interested, go check that out. I just kind of talk about where I think Chelsea are going to finish, who's going to be our best players, cups, all that kind of stuff. If you're a Chelsea fan, go check that out. But this is about the Premier League as a whole. I'm going to do the bottom three and the top eight. Bottom three, of course, because relegation. Top eight, because it's just so hard to like predict what's going to happen. Like, I was looking at it, trying to do a top six, and it's like there's so many teams competing for this that I've moved it to a top eight, even then it's still difficult. But that's what we're going to go with. We'll start with the relegation places, of course. We'll, and in 20th position, I've got Sheffield United. It feels harsh. And it, it obviously seems easy to choose the newly promoted side. But when you look at this Premier League, this I feel like now more than ever, there's so much talent and so much money flying around into the Premier League that you look at some teams and you're like, how can Sheffield United now even compete with Nottingham, who spent so much money have a year's experience in the Premier League. Like, I don't know. It's going to be difficult for them. I don't think they've done the business that they need to. I don't know if they're going to have what it takes to stay in the Premier League. It's a shame, but who knows? And I think the exact same goes for Luton, who I've got in 19th. And to be honest, it could be either way. But Luton are the same. Are they ready for the Premier League? Most would argue no. And and their, their ground isn't ready for the Premier League. I don't think their players are. Have they invested in the way they are? But it's fine. They could just be doing a little bit of a yo-yo thing where they come up, get the money, go down, reinvest, go up again. And this is a, this is a, all a process. You don't come into the Premier League and just automatically be a top ten. You know what I mean? And that's fine. Uh, so if they're smart with this, this could be an okay season. I don't think they won't like surprise some teams. I think you know when you got the glitz and glamour of City, United, or whatever, and they go down to Luton and then have to play there away and it's that you know hostile little ground like there might be some surprises for Luton but I just don't know if they'll have what it takes for the whole season and then in 18th place I haven't got a newly promoted side I actually have Wolverhampton I think it's their time to go which is insane because you think just a few years ago they were in the Europa League they had great players but now I just think they're losing these players and they're not replacing them they're not getting who they need to get back in to replace these players um, and I think it's a massive blow for them and I also just don't see goals where are they getting their goals from? They tried to get Costa in, that didn't work. They've just like lost Jimenez, who I know wasn't scoring loads of goals after his injury, but still a goal scorer. They're losing their creative players. They haven't reinvested in their defence. It just doesn't seem like it's going well for them. The manager, although a great manager, I don't know if he, I don't know if he feels like he's backed by the, pre, the by the board, and I feel like he might be one of the first managers to go, and then it just spirals out of control and. Yeah, I just don't think Wolves have got what it takes this year. I think this might be, unfortunately, the year that they, they fade away. So then we move to our top eight. Like I said, this was so difficult to do. I'm, I'm flip-flopping now looking at it, but I'm, I'm going to try and stick with it, my guns. And in eighth position, I've got Brighton. I think Brighton are obviously a great team over the last couple of years. They're really pushing. They've got European football for the first time in their their history, which is huge. That might take away from them this year. We all know how cruel in the Europa League can be. They're going to want to do really well in it. Of course they are. That, it's a massive competition. And for Brighton fans to be in it, they're going to want it all. That And like, do they have the depth to handle that and handle the Premier League at the same time? I think yes. I think they're going to do okay. That's why they're still in eighth, which is still a great position. But I think that knock-on effect will drop them down just a little bit in the Prem. After that, in seventh, I've got Tottenham. Because I think they're going to have a fun season. I actually do. I think they're all in a better place than they were the last couple of years, that's fine. But I don't think they have the squad to do much with it. If they lose Kane, they're definitely not finishing any higher than seventh. But they're going to have a fun time. The players are going to have a little exciting bit of football. I don't know. I think they're going to concede buckets of goals, but they might just try and outscore teams because uh, I just don't believe in that defence at all or the goalkeepers, either of them. So it's going to be okay for them. They'll enjoy it, but I don't think they'll do much this season. I just don't think they have it. I think... Obviously, if they invest in Postacoglu, if they invest in their defence, uh, maybe, you know, use the, if they do sell Kane, which we don't know what's going to happen, use that money smartly, they can start pushing back up again. But right now, it's a free hit for Tottenham. Go have fun. 
that's that's I think that's what's gonna happen. In sixth place, I've got Newcastle. I think Newcastle's new expectation now after we getting top four last season, they're not there yet. I don't know. I think of that was an incredible season, but that's because that's all they really cared about. Of course, they had the League Cup as well, um, but they have the Champions League now for God's sake, and like they're gonna want to do well, and it's gonna be special. Champions League under the lights at St James's, that's going to be special for them. Absolutely. And that atmosphere alone will help them out. And I think they might even get out of the group stage with that. I genuinely do think that. But that will take their eye off the ball. I think they will have a slower start to the Prem because of the Champions League. And then when they get knocked out of that, they're going to want to push for the Cups like they did with the League Cup, with the FA Cup. This team and, and Eddie Howe, the expectations now on Newcastle are so big. They, they're going to want a trophy to back that up. I mean, for Eddie Howe as well, just to... Not to keep his job because he's done such a great job, but you know they're going to start looking at these top class managers. And is Eddie Howe going to like start getting questioned if he gets a trophy? You can't. So I think they will look at that, and all these factors will start, you know, slowing them down in the Premier League a little bit. By slowing them down, sixth place is still brilliant for Newcastle, especially where they're at now. But this group of players definitely could go ahead and win a trophy this season, but that might be to the detriment of them in the league. And then in fifth place, I've got Liverpool, and I think that's a bit lower than some people have got them I think they have a lot of people uh, play people have Liverpool in top five top four I just don't see it I think there's a lot of uncertainty going on with Liverpool right now I think losing the players that they have Henderson Fabinho they've lost a lot of their spine which you know every good team needs a solid spine and they've lost a bit of that now with the new players coming in do you trust Aaron Nunes to get loads of goals a lot of people are saying this is his season now I don't see it personally. I think Salah's going to score bundles of goals, of course, and that will drag him up the, the thing. The midfield is new, fresh, exciting, but we don't know what's going to happen there. So I think the uncertainty, also the Europa League, let's not forget that. Like It's a great competition. They have great history in it. Why not push for it? You know what I mean? So I do think um, Liverpool will finish fifth for those reasons. And then we go to fourth, and I'm flip-flopping a little bit here because in my prediction video, I had Chelsea in third. And I think I want to push us down to fourth, just purely because of like everything else going on at the minute. I do. I've got high hopes for the season. I didn't. I had no hopes for the season. But what Poch has done and what this preseason has done has really excited me. I think this young, hungry team with nothing but the Premier League to focus on. Why can't they get up to the you know top four? Maybe a few cup runs here and there. I don't know. But if our sole focus is on that Champions League spot next season, which is okay, we, by playing good football to get there. I think we can do it. I really do. And then we can build on top of that. But this core group of young players at the minute is exciting. And look at, you know, it's a bit like what Arsenal have done, but we kind of speed run it a little bit because of, because obviously our ownership has spent loads of money. Um, it's going to be a roller coaster of a season, but I think it'll be a good one for Chelsea. And then in third place, I've got Arsenal. I've got Arsenal. I think instantly Arsenal fans are probably going to attach onto that and be annoyed by that. But I just think they did so well to get, you know, push City last season. They were top of the table for most of it. They probably should have won it. They bottled it. But that was with all their energy. You know, they dropped out the Europa League. They dropped out the Cups. All their energy was on the Premier League and they couldn't do it then. This year, they'll have the Cups, which they'll want to do well in. It's Arsenal. Of course they should. And then the Champions League as well, something they haven't had for years now. And this young, hungry squad with Arteta, you're telling me they're not going to want to push for out the Champions League? All these factors are going to drop them out of the Premier League title race. I, I can't, I don't know if they've got the depth. I think their signings have been great, but blown way out of proportion. Rice is world class, don't get me wrong. And I think that's a great signing for him in that midfield. But Havertz is average. Like, I don't think he elevates them that much. He, as a striker, he's not going to score you 20 goals. He'll score you 10, that might help. But is didn't, like, Jesus, like, do the same. But he's, I guess he's injured. But do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he's a bad player. I don't think he'll definitely help. But he's not the next step for them to win the league. And then Timber, I don't know much about him. He might be good, but I don't know. So I don't know. I think Arsenal, I mean, going well in the Champions League, top four again, it's not a, not a failure. And I think, you know, it, they'd be happy with that. <laughs> but no, I, I think that's where they'll, that will, they'll finish. And then that means, of course, in second place, I've got... United. I just think their business has been good. Onana changes the team completely. I think they've got a core group of players under Ten Hag already that are ready for that. Casemiro, Martinez, Bruno Fernandes. They're building something. 
they've got that new striker coming in who I don't know much about but might do you know he hasn't got the world you know the expectation of the world on him because he's young and he's not like Kane who they haven't gone for which I think they still should um, yeah and I think they can push I do think they can push similar things to all the other teams they've got other cups to worry about Champions League as well to worry about which is something you know they want to be in and they want to continue to be in um, so yeah I do think they're one of the stronger teams to push for this um, for this league but again I do think they'll fall short also Mount like he's obviously been shit but in pre-season this pre-season I think he's got that energy and that willpower and that skill to elevate them just slightly a little bit um, to bring that and obviously you know Ten Hag is a great great manager for sure um, but then, of course, that leads us to number one, which is inevitable. Is City. If you don't put City in number one, you are just kind of like begging it a little bit. I think I just don't. I think you're just trying to look cool. It's sad, but they're like one of the best teams we've ever seen. And they, even though they have lost players like Mares and Gundogan, like it doesn't matter. They've replaced them with Kovacic, who's a great player, and like, and you know, they've still got more business to do. And like. Haaland was just his first season, which is terrifying. What's he going to do in his second? Like, it just feels inevitable, um, doesn't it? And, and I know four in a row has just never been done before, but, like, the treble felt impossible other than United doing it. And they got lucky to do it. City looked comfortable doing it. I don't know. I just think it's sad, but City are probably going to do it again and again and again until Pep leaves and and the team starts to crumble. So hopefully that happens soon. But then do, do I hope that it happens soon? Because I don't want Arsenal winning. I don't want United winning. I don't want Liverpool winning. So I'd rather City win the league until we get better again, <laughs> which I don't know what will happen. So, yeah, I don't know. I think City are going to win, but I feel like everyone does. So that's it. That's my prediction video. Of course, I might be completely wrong about this. Fucking Arsenal might win the league, which will be a dark, dark day. But hey-ho. <laughs> we we made it thank you for watching I do appreciate you watching this video um, these are always fun the Premier League it's always good, good to make these and then look back at the end of the season big season coming up this is it now we're here Chelsea are back I'm actually kind of excited I'm going to make a bunch of content this season I'm really looking forward to it so if you like this kind of style of content my content please do like and subscribe it means the world to me it really does um, but thank you I'm going to end it there I'll see you in the next one we've got Chelsea Liverpool coming up that's exciting and terrifying at the same time. <laughs>